confident, the assurance, the privilege of boldness. Are we supposed to be bold? We're supposed, supposed to be bold. And, 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 and sure. And sure. Which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, making any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, in it, he listens to us. In it, he listens to and hear us. Hmm. When God, when the, all the things I talk about today, if you go, Father, oh, I thank you for the bountifulness of, of life, resurrection life. Or you pray for someone to have resurrection life, God will listen. If you pray because of the position you are seated or for someone to be seated at the right hand of God, these are all God's plans, God will listen. If you pray for God to open someone's eyes or the church eyes to see the opponents they are fighting, God will listen and show it to them. We are asking God for everything else except what he's trying to work and what he's trying to do. Do you understand this? If you pray, you have to for God to teach you how to raise up the shield to dispel the mist so he will listen. Or for someone to do it. Or for, or for you to become more familiar. Amen? With the belt of truth, God will let you know it. Or someone else, he will listen to you. Or for the breastplate or integrity or right standing, God will listen to you or, or do it for the other people. But when you're praying outside of the things God wants to give you, God don't listen to you because it can't help you. The Israelites, instead of praying that God, you know, be glorious in the moment, they're praying this. Oh Lord, take us back to Egypt so we can be slaves. God didn't want that. Are you listening to me? <laughs> you, 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 you see, yeah. you have to understand your confidence comes from knowledge. Hmm. You have to know. If not, one of the things the enemy will check on, where do you get that confidence? What are you standing on? I always can tell if someone got a, a fairly decent angle on something. If do they really understand faith or salvation? Amen. Or standing form with feet that are ready, their feet is fixed. Or they understand the opponent. Perfect. Or they understand the right hand of God or the new life or drawing strength or armor. Perfect. Within five minutes or any, situ any crisis, I quickly go, oh boy, this person was not prepared. They will not be able to be much help to us in this situation. We have a Red Sea before us, Pharaoh behind us. Somebody didn't prepare them. The reason you are given, you are become mothers of church and families and sisters and brothers is to make sure you and others are ready for the day of crisis. Hallelujah! Verse 15 says, And if since we, have, we positively know, Amen? That he listens to us in whatever we ask. We also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have grant to us. Amen. As our present possession, we got it. The request made of him. So if you know God listening to you because you're moving in alignment to God's will, you know any request you ask God, you got it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a simple story, but this is just my father. He's amazing this way. My computer chair is broke. I got, I got to get a computer chair. Um, I, in fact, I got a computer chair. I saw one on sale, but I'm a big man. It was too short. I didn't realize it was short. So it was kind of, it was like a, it was, it was a chair for I could get a kid. And I didn't realize it. I just didn't read it carefully. So I realized I got to get another chair. I, I saw the sale price. I like sale. I all right. I was home a couple mornings ago, and, and I, I was reading. And I felt the strongest urge Go look for the chair. And I go, Lord, I'm studying. Why would I go there? I don't even like the world. And I sense, go off for the chair. And I'm like, Lord, am I developing something for the world? Anyway, I obey. I went to two places. I went, I see the chair I want. But I didn't want to pay the price that I saw. So I go, when I get some money, I'll buy it. I'm walking up. As I'm leaving, I get a sense, this, 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 like this urge. He go, go, go over there. I'm like, that's just clear and stuff. He goes, just go. When I go there, the chair I want is there. <laughs> the chair is for a hundred and I think hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So there's a clearance box there. <coughs> guess how much for the clearance chair and the box? Take a guess. Two guess quickly. Ninety-nine. Hmm? Eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. <laughs> what? Ninety percent off. Wow. I go. Maybe something is wrong with it. The lady said, No, no. The, the, the stitching. Let's say it should be this way. You can stitch it maybe a little this way. Somebody brought it back, and we can't sell it. Wow. I took the chair and set it up. Perfect. $8.99. For a computer chair. Computer chair. A $200 chair. Can I have one? Absolutely. <laughs> My point is, and I was telling her, once you, even, I, I didn't even really, it was 
nothing major. But from the time I was just kind of thinking about it. And God blesses you. Amen. This is the confidence you have to have in God. If you will rest and, be, and, and stay drawing strength from him. And put on the armor. And have the same enemy that he has. Stop fighting with your fellow man. That's not what they've just been used. They're pawns. The fight is, is, is the master spirit. Because they can't use the shield, he's able to penetrate them what? At will. Because they do not know the truth, he's able to penetrate them. Because their foot cannot stand properly. Because they can't put on, keep on the helmet, he access their mind and feelings at will. Do you understand me? I'm telling you, he will bless you before you get... You. Ridiculous blessing I'm talking about. Ridiculous. But you have to stay... You have to know a couple of things. I should have probably count those things. I'm going to try to do them right now quickly as I wrap this up. So, the Bible says you will have the confidence to ask God for everything. I just want to read that 15 from the NIV then before I, I, I summarize this for you. Verse 15 said from the NIV. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have what he asks of him. He will give it to you. One of the reasons a lot of time you're not getting, you're either asking outside of his will. Do, do you understand? You're not asking in alignment with the things he wants to do. I know he wants to glorify his kingdom and how to bless his fellow man. You're asking outside of it. Or you're giving up your peace and falling to the Red Sea and the Egyptian behind you. You're not resting and let him fight. I just have to praise with the Lord. It's a chair. Why do you get involved in things like this? He said, I am every second involved in your life, boy. Mm. To the very details. If every ear in your skin I number, do you think I'm interested in everything you think about and do? Do you understand this concept? Oh, hallelujah. God so wants to bless you. He needs your life to prosper. Amen? So he can be magnified. So he can go, that's my life and my strength and my armory and my Truth, he has the wrong is lying in my breastplate and my shield and my helmet and my shard upon his feet. Let me explain a little bit about shard. If you know anything about horses, horses have hoofs, as you know. And when you don't want the horse's feet to get damaged by the pave, right. you normally put on an arm an or shoe. You shard his feet. Something that surrounds the edges of his feet, that his feet does not itch the pave, but the shoe hit it. God puts something on your foot. That, the, that, that when you push in, it can withstand the ground and the top. This is called shoddy. Do, do you understand this? This is why I said when you hit it on the road, you hear the foot going like click, click. It's the metal hitting the pavement. Yeah. Do, do, do you understand? Yeah. God put something on your feet that you can't get weak in. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do, do, do you understand this? It's true. You see, so I encourage you. You know, as I said, you ought to be praying all kind of praying, either for you or for somebody else, and start to open your eye. The enemy will try to derail you that you don't pray. You see, please just catch this thing and you can go back. You need the life of Christ, which you have. The position, the name, amen? The position, the name, the authority, the armory of God, amen? The enemy, the master spirit, the despotism, the evil spirit that want to bring darkness. Amen? You need to be clear on that. You need to make sure you're losing no ground. He's not gaining any inroad when he attacks you or the body of Christ. Do you, do you understand this? Amen? You need to make sure you have the truth. And God gives you this. You just say that you'll be thanking God or those that you see don't have it be praying or helping them. You, you, you see? The breastplate of integrity and morals. Right standing, be clear with that. The shield that can dispel Amen. It's missile when he attack from long range. Amen. You need to have, amen, your feet shot, fixated in Jesus. Amen. And the sword of the spirit. And you need the helmet of salvation, the covering of God. And then have confident, amen, that when you stretch out your hand, you can divide the sea. So others can pass through and you can pass through. When you stand with the ark in the water, like at the Jordan, the rivers will part. Do you understand this process? You, you need to be very clear on this. You see? And, and, and as you do this, God will be glorified. You need to know you have confidence that anything you ask for, God will do. 
Church, I, oh, I pray you understand these things. Amen. How we need to mature into this principle. Amen. You will not be able to use a tortive prayer if you don't get this concept. Believe me, what God has done with you, it's, it's not simple. This is why I, the Bible said judgment begins in the church. Next week, if God allows it, I want to show you a brother who understands this from 2 Samuel. We're not going to go there today. Amen? His name was Shamat. And he knew not to give up ground. He uh, had yeah. confidence. Woo. Amen. Too many of us, like the Egyptians, soon as there's a Red Sea or a Pharaoh, we throw away everything God has done. We throw away the life, we throw away the armory. Amen. We pretend the opponent is greater than the salvation provider. It is embarrassing. We have to be praying for the church to be victorious. The church has to be presented to the bridegroom without any blemish, no defects. Do you understand this? Some, I tell you, sometimes I gotta pray for the Lord to strengthen my heart. I weep sometimes when I see the state of the body of Christ. Mm. Oh, she is so blessed, mm. but she understands so little about life and blessing. Correct. She has been in curse and death so long. She is yeah. so good. The Egyptians, they were in debt for so long and cursed. The first little trouble, they immediately enter back into the death attitude and the cursed attitude. Mm. We are done there for today in the name of Jesus. Not, I would preach to you literally all day. In fact, every day, all the time till you get this. Because I know if you get it, what an administration you will be. What glory unto the kingdom. These are the things. This is a message I encourage you. Go and listen to it again. Yes. Listen to it until you can do it and you can pray and you can help people. It's the one before in this one. Yes. Yeah. Pastor Chow, you know one of his specialty. After the message, he can't wait to go listen to it again. Yeah. He makes sure he lay hold of it. So when it's necessary for him to stretch out the rod, he's ready. May this word bless you. May it encourage you. May it strengthen you. I may position you for glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you and I appreciate your life. As usual, I thank we are about to take up tithing, but I thank God for all those that listen Amen. on the net, etc. We appreciate your life. May the word bless you today. May it nourish you. May you understand you have new life. May you understand your position at the right hand of God with Jesus because you're in Jesus. You're in the name and you're Amen. in the authority. May you understand, from your union, you must keep drawing strength, that boundless strength of God that if His strength provides. And put on the full armor. May you be clear on the opponent, not flesh and blood. Amen? Mm. May you be fully upon the armor of God. May you guard yourself in the belt of truth. Amen? Keep it on your loins, the breastplate of integrity and moral. And remember you are in right standing with God. Lift up the shield that will dispel the flaming arrow. May your feet remain shod in a state of readiness, form, and fitted on what you're standing. Amen? May you pick up the sword of the Spirit and put on the helmet of salvation. In the name of Jesus, we appreciate your life. Stay blessed. Understand this. Confident come from what you know, whether you hear it or unbelieve it or you have a revelation. And what you know can be trusted. Your confidence will come. This is why God had shown Israel a set of sign in Egypt. They should have been confident because they had seen it and heard it and they knew it could be trusted. Moses was able to declare in verse 16, amen, um, um, 13 and 14, um, stand and see the salvation. Because he had seen it, he know it, and he knew it can be trusted. Our confidence comes from what we have either hear or experienced. You understand? And because we know we can trust it. You need, if you cannot experience the life that raised Jesus from the dead that you have, you need to say, Lord, give me a subjective experience of this life within me, or to be at the right hand of God, or the name of Jesus, or the authority of Jesus. Amen. Or give me light to see the enemy. You understand? Or to or an experience of your armory. Whatsoever. You need to get to a point that you trust it. And you, if you don't, you need to pray. And those that you see lacking it, you need to work with them. Pray for them. Intercede. Consistently on these matters. Because as you know, the evil day of the crisis, if it doesn't come for you, it's coming. But it's going to be your health, your family, your administration, your friend. One way or the other. I promise you, Satan is drawing up 
a strategy to take you out, to rock your world. Because he's always afraid of you because of the life and the position of the armory of God. And it was God loved you and God thoughts and plan and desire for you. It terrifies him. You understand this. So do not let him derail you from the position. Those that are mother, do not let him derail you from the position of mother, aunts, sisters, pastors, teachers, worship, you understand? Administrator, miracle workers, whatsoever. And based on what God has placed before you and open your eyes to see, do not let the enemy steal it. Don't let him distract you and get you caught up with a whole lot of stuff. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray the Lord grant us grace to be effective in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.